The reality of contemporary conflicts in the Great Lakes region is no longer a myth. It is here, it is evident, and it is happening. Now, in Islam world, in Islam today, we center our focal point on the Great Lakes region, the countries, the conflicts therein. Now, particularly in Uganda, the recent bomb blasts. Are the Muslims to blame? Should they distance themselves from it? Are they behind this or not? All this in week in focus, myself, Shadra Shagav Kisame, and of course, with Hajara Ashaba, as she goes deep and she tells us what we should expect after the break. are on the Muslim channel DBS Islam week in focus Islam now Islam today welcome to the show Hajara Ashaba um, thanks Shadrach um, nice to be here right, right there's so much to talk about when it comes to the Great Lakes region I would want to start from Uganda but that's later on in the show but let's just let's just start with what is happening in Ethiopia what 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 do we see what what's going on um, but in, in Ethiopia, at least things are clear there. Mm -hmm. the, the issue is political. Right. Um, we have uh, the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Force, mm -hmm. fighting against the Ethiopian army, uh, uh, the, the government, right. Abiy Ahmed's government. Right. Yeah, uh, they, want, they want power. Initially, they were fighting for their independence and, and what is supposed to be theirs, mm -hmm. in their opinion. But uh, then it escalated when Abib allegedly involved Eritrea. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know we do not have uh, enough time to cover this, but Eritrea was formerly Ethiopia. Right. Eritrea fought and uh, they got independence. The independent, yeah. yeah. Um, then after that, in 1998, there was a conflict. There, there has That's why he was able to earn the uh, Nobel Peace Prize. Right. But then you have people that had been in power. Now, uh, I'm about to use a statement that I don't, I don't like using. Mm -hmm. But uh, just like we have had Museveni in power for uh, close to 36 years, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and people treat it as a, a Chinyankole affair, Western Uganda affair. Right. So let's say that Museveni lives for, because Lele Zenawi right. used to be the president of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and he died uh, around uh, 2016, I think. Yeah. But uh, so when he left power, then uh, the, the, the Tigrayan mm -hmm. left power. These are the people that removed the dug and then they captured power. They were there for decades. Now you take them out of power. If you take them out of power completely, that is a political mistake because these are people that believe they have a bearing to the country. Why? Why? How is it a political mistake? You're out, you're out. It does not work like that. These mm -hmm. are people that think they're entitled. They think, uh, okay, before Meles Zenawe and company took over the power in, in Ethiopia, right. Ethiopia was governed by uh, Haile um, Mengistu Mariam. Mm -hmm. Those are the guys that overthrew the emperor, Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. So these are the people that think changed the country from an empire to a, a federal republic. Now, when, when, when someone does something like that, it's like how Uganda, how Museven overthrew or bought it from mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. Now, these guys are going to think that they, liber they liberated the country and the country owes them something. Right. Now, it is wrong to think like that. Mm -hmm. But these are people that have guns, they have the money, they have the power, and they think like that. When you take them out and you make their enemy, mm -hmm. you, you sleep in the same bed with their enemy. Right. If they have the power to fight you, they are going to, which is what we are seeing in Ethiopia. Right. So, so, so uh, under 30 seconds, with, with all that withstanding, yeah. where do you see the political and economic trajectory of Ethiopia? Um, I think the economy is, is going to be in shambles, give it a few months, because you have had the conflict ongoing since November last year. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Abiy Ahmed decided to declare a state of emergency. He had no choice because they were advancing. Right. Yeah. So economically, the country is going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simply put. And politically speaking, and then militarily, if Abi does not get serious alliance, he may get overthrown. Right, that's Ashaba Hajara right there for you. Now, the question of Somalia, is it still a threat? Or have the Al-Shabaab been thwarted completely? 
you know the, the problem with fighting insurgents that hide behind a, a, a faith cause, a religious cause, right. is that for the top, it is a political cause. Mm -hmm. But for the recruits, it is a religious cause. Some that are misguided may think that they are fighting for a cause, a religious cause. In such a case, it's like fighting the Taliban. That's not a war that you completely win, mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. You are going to, yes, uh, you know what they say that you have won the battle, but you have uh, uh, lost the war. Right, You're right. going to win particular battles, but these elements are never going to get eliminated because theirs is faith-based. Someone believes that Somalia is supposed to be run by this tribe because Somalia's problem. Actually, the misconception is between the, the religious na nature of the conflict in Somalia, but it is more tribal than religious. But these are guys that are fighting a political and tribal and hiding behind Islam. So for some elements that are fighting, it's, it's a faith-based war. But even those that are fighting because it's a tribal thing, Someone believes that the Baganda should be the ones running Uganda. There is nothing you're going to do to change that attitude. So no, I don't think that the issue of Al-Shabaab is going to be fought at any point. It is here to stay. Yeah. Right. Now, talking about Rwanda, is Rwanda the innocent one in the region? Or is she responsible for some of the instabilities going on? I think Rwanda is, is a princess of Cold War. <laughs> yeah, Rwanda is too small. Yeah, they yeah. don't have the resources. Yeah, they don't have the manpower. Hell, sometimes they cannot even support their own population with food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, uh, they cannot start a conventional war. Mm -hmm. They cannot come directly and they say, "Now let's let's fight this." They don't have but, the luxury. No, they don't. But what they can do it the guerrilla way, just like they normally run to Katuna, shoot, shoot a few Ugandans and, and run back and say they were smuggling. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, Rwanda, I, I think. I think that the, the, actually that the conflicts we have in this region have been perpetuated by a, a particular few countries mm -hmm. and uh, I really wouldn't put my eyes past Rwanda and Uganda. Right, before we go for a short break, yes. the events happening in Mozambique, do we see a similarity or can we contrast with what is happening in Cape Delgado yes. and Kampala? Is there, is there a similarity, not to politic, but let's just point a floodlight on, 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 on that capital on that on that city. To be fair in this show we politic, but <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not try let's try not to politic. Uh, the, the only difference between Cape Delgado and Kampala is that you're not going to have a full army fighting, uh, uh, releasing videos in Uganda uh, right. that, that uh, for us we are we are fighting for this cause and you're in a, a military fatigue and you have the guns and, 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 and the, um, uh, the UPDF is, is going to let you settle with that. Right. Uh, the force that we have observed for these years, mm -hmm. we know that in Uganda that cannot happen. Right. And, and then fighting a religious war in Uganda, it, it, it still would be hard. I think the force is, is still so strong. Mm -hmm. yeah? And we do, not, we do not have people that are extremized in such a way in Uganda that you can see... Um, someone fighting that I'm fighting in the name of Catholicism or in the name of Islam. Mm -hmm. I think that Ugandans are not that, we are not that extreme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Whether religiously or politically, Ugandans are not like that. They, they are going to have an elite. So we're not gullible people. You can't just come from nowhere and sell, sell a narrative and jump onto it. Or maybe we are not loyal. Because <laughs> free, free independence, our indep the, the independence political fights and strategies right. were based on religions, UPC and Anglicanism, mm -hmm. uh, DP and Catholicism. Right. But never once did they pick weapons and, and fight. It was a whole Cold War until Amin came in with Islam and just remixed the whole thing. Yeah. So Ugandans don't normally extremize themselves to an extent that they start fighting for a cause. Be it tribal, when the Museveni's went to the bush, it was never tribal. This was just a group of guys that were either fighting to liberate or steal. So Hajara, under 30 seconds, do we see a contrast between Mozambique and Uganda, Kampala and Cape uh, Delgado? Yeah, I, I think uh, th uh, th there is a difference, but the difference is embedded in the security apparatus and strength of the two nations. All right. Yeah. I'll tell you, Hajara has a way she likes to diagonize her sicknesses in terms of politics, <laughs> but... A list came out as a result in response to the twin bombing in Kampala. Most of them were Muslims. After the break, we find out, are they behind it or is it just a conspiracy? Do not go away.
welcome back. Now we are on the Muslim channel here at the .NET Broadcaster Studio. Now remember, we are actually at the hub. Now at the hub, we actually have a lot of things happening. The .NET Broadcaster Studio where we do a lot of production. Now remember, we are production house, live streaming, outdoor broadcast, transmitter broadcast, TV shows, content production, name it. The list is endless. But not forgetting our sweet and tasty Nana Cakes. All your events are sorted. Now look no further but Nana Cakes here in Salama Road in Munyonyo. Now a list of Muslims came out after a twin bomb blast in Kampala. But most of them were Muslim. And we are trying to find out with Hajara today. Is it a Muslim affiliated operation? What were the Muslims trying to, enter, to, to benefit out of this? If they are the Muslims. Um, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't want uh, us to... I really don't want this incident to be mentioned in, in Islam, mm -hmm. in any sentence, anywhere. Because, um, first of all, Islam does not condone such things. Americans and what they did not fulfill as far as their contractual obligations were concerned. But they came out, Al-Qaeda came out and said why they were fighting, right? Because America had, had breached contractual obligation, obligations. Okay. Osama knew enough Islam to understand that Islam would not condone uh, uh, pulling down a plane. Uh, whenever you see, um, I think that contemporary media yeah. has been unable to detach Islam from terrorism. How do we do that when every time there's a bombing, there's a... Now the list that came out, had, you saw the list that came out? Yeah. All of them were Muslims. Yeah, I, you could have seen, uh, those were three people. Yeah. But I was looking at something, uh, uh, because Museven insists mm -hmm. that um, the, the people that are responsible for the attacks, since, um, since I think the Kawesi days, yeah. yeah, he insists that it's ADF. Yeah, the ADF. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was looking at a list that was published of, of, AD, of the alleged ADF fighters, right. and they are Muslim yeah. from the first to the last. And this one is saying it's the ADF, and uh, since it's the ADF, they are Muslim. Is it but, a Muslim ter terrorist group? Um, ADF, I, I, I wouldn't say so. When, when the NRA took over power in 1986, there were other groups. When they were in the bush, several other groups were in the bush trying to capture power in Uganda. That's how the names Alice Nakwen are going to come up. That's how the names LRA are going to come up. The, there were other groups where the Moses Alice were fighting. That is where you find the ADF, the Allied, Allied Democratic Forces. Yeah. As you know, Islam forms 14% mm -hmm. of the Ugandan population. Right. Yeah. If you were to stand for an election in Uganda yeah. based on an Islamic ticket, you would know very well that yeah. unless you're standing for MP in the Gomba... No brainer, you're, you're losing. Yes, you're, you're going to lose the right. election, yeah? yeah. Uh, even, even if you are to um, uh, campaign on a religious ticket in Uganda, be it, in, be it Islam or any other ticket, you would not win. First of all, Museven would come for you. I don't know if you have heard the number of times he talks about um, discussing things in line of religion and whatnot. Anyway, to go back to your question, mm -hmm. I think it is very wrong to, uh, to identify Islam with the events that happened, because yes, um, uh, there, there is a lot of questions. I, I have tried this whole week not to address my mind to mm -hmm. what has been happening. Um, I was on the internet seeing uh, the claims that, that ISIS had made that they were responsible. I was uh, looking at the police saying that it's the ADF, uh, Museven saying that it's the ADF, and then I think Ugandans questioning the authenticity and Right, truth. right. There's been a lot of controversy around yeah. who's responsible. Yeah, but one thing is clear. This, it, it, like you said, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. This is not Islam-related. Because usually, even w when I see bombs happening, like we have what we have on the screen right there, yeah. uh, the suicide bombers usually do, usually attack people that are in numerous numbers. But here, you are blowing up one 
to people. Yeah. I, I, I do not get that the, the, the narrative. Was the person who is responsible, whom we don't know for now, yeah. but according to police, is ADF. Yeah. Were the ADF, what were they trying to do? What was their motive? Uh, in as far as terrorist motives are concerned, yeah. what happened in Uganda does not make sense in the line of terrorism. The only way it, you can relate it to terrorism is the fact that there was a bomb. And if you go to the legal definition of terrorism, is that the intention is to create fear or threaten to create fear amongst the population. Those are the parts that qualify. But uh, whereas we have, um, we have stellar intelligence services and, and, and we have a, a stellar uh, UPDF, I don't know about the police, that <laughs> perhaps you can say that entry mm -hmm. of uh, dangerous materials that could be used to make bombs in Uganda may be complicated. Right, yeah. But if someone can come that far, if someone can uh, be able to access CPS, it means that they can be able to access taxi parks, they can be able to access downtown, they may be able to access schools, hospitals, ha markets. Ashaba, mm. who went ahead with the confidence to bomb Uganda twice on the same day? Who is responsible? Let me ask you a question. Have you been to a supermarket? Yeah. Have you seen how they check? Yeah. If you had even the slightest motive to threaten anyone, be it Ugandans, you're a Ugandan in Uganda, you have a motive, you want to threaten Ugandans, oh, let's just say that in, in the, the wildest sense of the word, ISIS perhaps could have access to Uganda, which given our intelligence, I, I, I find it ludicrous to, uh, to, to, to even fathom. Do you think you would get scared to enter a certain supermarket and... and I mean, have you seen our security inside the country? Do you think it would be hard? As long as someone has the bomb uh, and it's chopped on their body, I don't think that they would fail to access places that they want to access, which is why it, it really brings a lot of questions as to the number of casualties that we are seeing right. with these bombings. Because initially we saw one person, then we saw one person in the bus, then we saw... Um, They're amounting to six now, six dead? Uh, yeah, uh, but there is a controversy mm -hmm. from the statement that was issued by the uh, uh, ISIS, if, if we should call it that. They were saying but that there are 30 people that the police is lying. But um, for me... Is the police lying? Do you think the police is lying? The police has lied several times, so I wouldn't put it out of the question. Uh, but uh, Shadrach, uh, now uh, I know that whoever is bombing Uganda, whether they are Ugandan or, or none, um, I know that the cause, first of all, is, is not Islamic. Please uh, do not, do not uh, start running away from your Muslim neighbors. You've grown up with them. Uh, Why wouldn't I run away from my friend Muhammad and yet all the lists, all the names on the list are Muslim? Be Suspects, Islam, ADF, Muslim. You just told me that it's a group like any other, it can have Christians, but ADF has always been linked. The, 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 the leader, Jam Jamil Mukul, yeah. was also a Muslim. But it's a no-brainer. Shadrach, it's just a matter of looking at the available information. Um, Baruch, his, his, code, his alias is the Punisher, mm -hmm. the man that is claimed to be uh, the UN security mandate, yeah. security council mandate that, that, is, that is in Congo, was saying uh, a few... Uh, I think, yeah, a few years earlier that that man was responsible for operating a drone that was um, um, uh, uh, wreaking havoc in, in Congo. Mm -hmm. These are the guys that have been in North Kivu. They have just started venturing out. Right. And the head said that the ADF is dead. Now we are the caliphate province of... Um, uh, there are a lot of questions around that. So, but, so, so, so who is the ADF now? Um, according to the information that the man that we are accusing of heading the ADF, Baluku, say, is the, something called the ADF does not exist anymore. Either it has morphed into the ISIS caliphate, or it does not exist, but Baruku insists... So if the ADF does not exist, who bombed Uganda last week? Um, those would have to be the questions that you give to the government, but I'm sure the government answer would be that those guys that morphed into what they call uh, the Central African uh, ISIS uh, Caliphate are the ADF for us. That's what we know. As, as we wind up the show, yeah. can the Ugandans ever know who bombed them? Shall we for a fact know who bombed us? 
uh, I think it's, it's the role of, of security and intelligence agencies to uh, withhold and, and hide information. Um, Are they hiding information? Of course, they're hiding information. Okay, uh, to, 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 be, to be nice to them, yeah. um, I think that sometimes there is information that governments think the public should not access for their own good or for their own good. Uh, but before we, we wrap this show up, I, I want to go back to what I was telling you, that do not see a Muslim neighbor and you run. And uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, extend that with uh, the question that you followed up, that if, if the lists are giving Muslim names, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, and uh, there is this that Muslims normally say, that when NRA was fighting, they adopted the Islamic names, even when none of them is Muslim. Yeah, so someone may have Muslim names and they are using it is uh, they are using it as a front. When it's a scapegoat. They, when I want to do crime. Yeah, but I become a Muslim. I know that if I do this, they are mm -hmm. going to just put it on Muslim. So how about I, I have an ID that shows that I am a Muslim? Second, uh, the media and governments can always propagate. Mm -hmm. But you, these are your neighbors. You know them. Mm -hmm. You have gone to the same schools. You have eaten the same meals. You have uh, had the same family meetings and, and gatherings and, and, and dinners and parties. Yeah. So uh, the Muslims in this country right now are, are in a very delicate situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I have a friend of mine. He works in counterterrorism. Uh, he called me on Wednesday after my paper, and, and he said, "Hi, Ashaba. I, I know you're Muslim. I wanted to see if they haven't taken you yet." Yeah. So um, this is not just something that uh, faces Muslims, it faces us as a, as a country, it's insecurity. Adja, should I be afraid of, of, of Muslims? You're not supposed to be afraid of Muslims. Why? Why should a type be yet you on the list? Because a Muslim, a Muslim, a Ugandan Muslim, knows that Islam does not condone, permit, advance, advise anything, bombing, terrorizing people. Has this been widely taught across the plane for all Muslims to know? Yes. Do not bomb people. Do the Muslim, does a regular Muslim know that Muslim or the faith does not condone violence? Yes, Shadrach. Someone that uh, knows, someone that has uh, read the Quran and, and, and hadiths and has listened to Islamic scholars, even the non-Muslims that have done very simple internet searches, they know that Islam and terrorism are just like this. It's not the same thing. Terrorism is politics. Islam is a faith. So when someone uh, wants to involve Islam and terrorism together, then they have their own mission. But we are a media house. We broadcast here. Right. And th the number one responsibility of media houses is disseminating information that the public may need. Right. You have your brother, your Muslim brothers and sisters out there, the neighbors. Right. Uh, these people have nothing to do with ADF. I don't want to be, people to be mistaken. I, I have seen information that this same guy, Baruku the Punisher, that he's uh, responsible for disseminating um, ISIS propaganda in, in uh, terrorist cells right. in Uganda. But uh, I do not think we have terrorist cells here. I don't think that our security is derailed to that extent yet. I want Ugandans to distance this from Muslims. I think this is here to rob us of the peace that we have enjoyed. We have not had it because the government has been so successful in doing it. We have had it because Ugandans have been security conscious to the extent that they have, uh, uh, we have always looked out for each other. Right. So, Hajara. Mm. Lastly, yes. lastly, as we wind, as we wind up the show, yeah. is our security too tight that it's it's not penetrable? Um, for, for what it's worth, and, and those of us that drive cars and, and we travel using taxis, the government released uh, a statement that the next the planning for the next bombing is going to occur in a traffic jam. So uh, at this point, I, I don't think that the, the security, our, our security is as bulletproof as we used to think that it is. Um, it, it has been penetrated in a space of three months. We have had four bombings, yeah? So you cannot rely on that. So please be your brother's keeper, be your sister's keeper, be on the lookout, anyone looking suspicious. I, I had a university that was stopping kids with backpacks from, from accessing <laughs> the premises, yeah? But uh, whether someone is a police person, whether someone is a civilian, for you, whoever you look at, be security conscious, right, yeah? Right, right. Uh, 
please take care of yourselves. Right, for sure, you can never know. We can never tell right now. We do not know. So as Hajara said, be your brother's keeper and make sure that you always keep everyone in check for the safety of yourself, your family, your relative, and your nation for the love of our nation. Now, we, it's been this week's week in Focus Islam Now with yours truly, Shadra Shagaf Kisame and fellow journalist always on set. Ashaba Hajara here at the Islam channel, DBS Islam. Now we are broadcasting here in Munyonyo at Salama Road at the .NET Broadcaster Studios here at the .NET Hub where we have a lot happening. Remember, we are broadcasters. We are a production house. For all your productions, look no further than the .NET Broadcaster Studios. Now, not forgetting Nana Cakes for all your pastries and events. Now, from me and the entire uh, .NET Broadcasters Studios management, we'd like to say ciao, adios, until next time, Bye. see you. Na yeko wanda ya yako nsecho usiramu echo, nafa wa movement, nafa nfukila daraba usiramu. Zenari usiramu kwa baita nga kasimu. Na teka nga hoka akakofira kava usiramu, bana... Kitawa, kitawa ono, ono mayanja, ono farida Nabarara, abasi kivazo Jemus kasozo, jemus kasozo mulabia wano Sajyo mkura abade wano Jemus kasozo janguma kuna we bano abana, abazo zukuru Uriru dawa Jamus Kasozi Abbas Chivazo Kavala Kariye Sula Bebamu Gangawa Numkampara Ngomu Siramu Kasimu